Last year, the ZenBook 14 was one of our favourite laptops. Heck, it was our number one pick for people who just wanted a good all-round laptop for light tasks. You know, schoolwork, office work, consuming content and that sort of thing. It had a really good display, a great keyboard, very long battery life and, for that use case, very little fan noise and it never got annoyingly warm to the touch. But what made the ZenBook 14 so special was that you could regularly find it on sale for around $600, US which was a complete steal. Well, the new ZenBook for 2024 is pretty much a 180. It now has the latest Intel Meteor Lake processor and a lot of changes from the 2023 model. But its price is now well over US dollars. In fact, at the time I filmed this video, this laptop is being sold for 1300 around double the price. So the big question is, is this new ZenBook 14 still a must-buy laptop in this completely different price bracket? But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Ugreen. Ugreen makes a range of premium laptop accessories. They just launched their brand new range of Nexo Pro chargers. These new chargers are significantly smaller than any charger we've ever seen. Take a look at how tiny the Nexo Pro 100W charger is compared to Apple's 96W and Ugreen's prior model. Plus, it weighs less than both of them, and these new chargers feel significantly more premium. As per usual, for Ugreen chargers, it has multiple ports, so you can charge all your devices at the same time. And and if you use the dedicated 100 watt single port, you can charge a MacBook Pro 14 from 0 to 86% within one hour. Treat yourself to a Ugreen Nexo Pro using one of the links down below the video. Let's get into it. This year's model has a noticeably different chassis. The lid has the same design language as its larger sibling, the 14.5 inch ZenBook 14X. There are these lines cut into the lid giving it a rather striking design versus the flat minimal look of the 2023 model. And the laptop as a whole looks more modern and premium. Several curved areas now have more defined angles and the cheap silver looking power button has been replaced with a regular one. Our unit is the Ponda blue colour which looks nice but it picks up fingerprints just like our Jade Black model from last year. The lid itself is much more rigid. It's extremely sturdy and it now includes a physical privacy shutter for the webcam. Unfortunately, the keyboard deck has a bit of flex to it, most noticeably around the top left and right corners of the trackpad. It's certainly not the worst we've seen, but it does flex more than last year's model. Lastly, the hinge has been redesigned. The laptop no longer lifts off the table when the screen is open. What's weird is that the redesigned hinge isn't as sturdy as last year's. This is especially noticeable when you use the laptop's touchscreen. The 2023 model feels very firm when you touch the screen. The 2024 model though, not as much. When it comes to portability, this new laptop is around 100 grams lighter, which is definitely a welcome change. On the display, this year's model has a slightly improved OLED panel. It now supports 120 Hz with dynamic switching down to 60 if the laptop is running on battery power. Last year's model only supported a 90 Hz refresh rate and did not offer dynamic switching. That was something you would have to manually do. Anyway, just like last year's, the brightness is around 350 nits. That is good enough, but I definitely wouldn't call it a bright display in 2024. For example, in a bright room, I definitely notice reflections while using the laptop, which I don't tend to notice on laptops with brighter screens. And I am of course referring to those with glossy panels just like in this laptop. Color accuracy continues to be fantastic, as does the resolution, which is high enough for text to look very crisp on screen. Looking at how much content I was comfortably able to see without needing to squint, I was able to see 29 rows in Excel. This is not as much content as I'd like to see on a display this size, and the main reason for it is due to the ZenBook's lower brightness. Like many OLED panels that we've tested, PWM flickering was present at all brightness levels. That being said, I wasn't bothered by it and my eyes are sensitive for that sort of thing. The keyboard is a bit of a step back, which is a pity as the last year's model had an excellent one. The key press now feels mushier and you can feel your fingers bottoming out. It still has the same simple layout though, which I like, as there are just no special keys that I accidentally mispress. Like last year's, the keyboard has a three-stage backlight. The trackpad is one of the best I've used. Gliding is perfectly smooth and feels natural, as does the click. I'd say the trackpad is a little better than last year's. Funnily enough, this year's model no longer has the option of converting the trackpad into a number pad like most Asus laptops, which I personally like as I found it a bit gimmicky. This year's model has the same port layout as last year, but it drops the micro SD card reader. 
Our model from last year had an AMD processor, which meant that the USB-C ports didn't support Thunderbolt transfer speeds. USB 4 was only rolling out back then, so it only supported 10 gigabits. Our model this year has an Intel processor, and both USB-C ports support Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabit. Other than that, the HDMI port continues to be 2.1, and there is a headphone mark combo jack and a USB A port. On paper, this year's model actually has slower USB A speeds, with 5 gigabit rather than 10 gigabit. The speakers on this year's model are much improved. The sound is loud, powerful, clear, and it has a decent soundstage. That being said, there really isn't much bass at all, and that's what separates this laptop from the top performing laptop in the category, the MacBook Pro 14. <laughs> Let's talk performance, as that's really the biggest change with this year's model. The Intel 7 Core Ultra processor inside from Intel's Media Lake generation is a big step up in performance from last year's model, which by the way had a Ryzen Zen 3 U series processor. Just using these two laptops side by side, I could straight away tell that the newer ZenBook felt snappier. In Geekbench, which tests common performance tasks, the ZenBook 14 performs on par with Intel's 13th Gen 8 series processor in the larger ZenBook 14X from 2023. That's the one with the 14.5 inch display, by the way. It also beat out almost every other common processor for thin and light laptops. The only processor that beat it is the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro 11 core chip. By the way, people keep asking me, why do I include the M3 Pro chip in comparisons with Media Lake and not just the base M2 or M3? The M3 Pro 11 core is the lowest end M3 Pro and really Apple's middle of the range processor. Same as where the Ultra 7 H series sits in Intel's lineup. U series below it and HX above it. So that's why. And yes, the Mac costs more, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Switching to Cinebench 2024, which tests how the laptop performs when maxed out. You can now see that there is a jump in single core performance over last year's model. But last year's model, as I mentioned, used a Zen 3 processor built on AMD's older architecture. But you'll notice that our ZenBook performs worse than our HP Spectre with the same processor. That laptop draws more power though to achieve its score. Now, I am aware that fellow reviewer Matthew Monas updated the bias of his ZenBook and got a much higher score, even beating our Spectre 14. We updated our ZenBook's bias too, but we actually got lower scores. And we ended up delaying this review for a month as we investigated. But try as we may, we never got scores higher than our original run. So we know the processor itself is capable of more performance, on par with Intel's 13th Gen 8 series from last year. However, right now, our ZenBook feeds its processor a more frugal 28 watts of power, and therefore delivers more modest performance. And FYI, just like in Geekbench, in Cinebench, this new Intel chip is substantially behind Apple's M3 Pro 11 core. When it comes to the efficiency of the processor, it is more power efficient than last year's model with AMD's Zen 3 processor, but it's still not as efficient as AMD's latest Zen 4 U series and nowhere near Apple's M3 Pro. Overall, if you were hoping that Intel's latest Media Lake would solve Intel's issue about requiring too much power for the performance their chips deliver, you'll be let down. In good news, looking at performance over time, there is no noticeable drop on repeated Cinebench 2024 runs. I'm thinking about removing this test entirely. Cinebench 2024 is a much longer running test than the older R23. So if there is a drop in performance, it occurs within the first run, and it doesn't really show up in consecutive runs. Let me know with a comment below if you support dropping this test from our usual benchmark suite. Graphics performance is fantastic from the new Intel Arc integrated graphics. It's an absolutely massive step forward and offers significantly more performance than the 780M integrated graphics in AMD's latest Zen 4 processor. After my initial video on Media Lake, several people have argued that this is heavily driven by the increase in memory speeds of these new Intel processors. Yes, memory speeds are much faster, but that alone isn't responsible for such a huge graphics performance gain. So you can now play some older AAA games on this laptop, and you can even do some light video editing too. This year's Media Lake Intel chip also comes with a neural core processor, which will definitely reduce fan noise and heat you feel in tasks that this kind of processor can accelerate. The obvious one being that background blur effect that we all use on Zoom calls. Please note that the software you use may have to be updated to make use of this. Under load, the heat you feel is fairly average for this kind of laptop, a thin and light one. It gets warm, but nothing alarming. It actually feels a good amount cooler than the HP Spectre 14. 
No surprises, as I showed you, that laptop feeds its Core Ultra processor more power. And the HP's fan noise is significantly less than the ZenBook, so HP probably isn't pushing as much air through their Spectre to keep it cool. In fact, when under max load, this laptop gets very loud, more akin to a gaming laptop than a thin and light Ultrabook. Please note, this year Intel has upped their CPU max temperature from 100 to 110 degrees. So that is why Asus allows this processor to run so hot. Taking a look at competitor processors, it's scary how much hotter these Intel processors run. Switching to light use. While I was writing the script for this very video, this laptop felt a little warm to the touch. Manageable, but it was there. However, in my quiet office, I could regularly hear the fans going. They weren't loud, but I could certainly hear them. Compared to last year's model with the AMD Ryzen processor, this year's is a little worse. When performing the exact same tasks on both laptops, the newer one gets ever so slightly warmer to the touch. They both have similar fan noise though under light use. When on battery, the good news is you do get the laptop's full performance. Battery life itself though is decent, but it's not as stellar as the prior ZenBook. Dimming the laptop screen to 200 nits of brightness, we ran Cinebench 2024 on a loop for 30 minutes. This year's laptop had 77% remaining, versus 85% of the older one. For light use, we played a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi for four hours. We recorded 56% remaining, indicating over eight hours can be expected for this use case. This is decent, but substantially worse than the 70% remaining we recorded on last year's model. And it's a lot worse than HP's new Spectre 14, especially considering that laptop has the same processor and a smaller battery. Like last year's model, the SSD is replaceable and the memory isn't. But there is a configuration this year with 32 gigs, which is great. Now, some good news. Asus did change the Wi-Fi card from the awful MediaTek one in their prior model. That one had some occasional Wi-Fi dropouts. We even made a short demonstrating how to replace a laptop's Wi-Fi card because of that machine. Anyway, this year's model now has an Intel card, but it is now soldered versus replaceable like the one from last year. The webcam is disappointing. My skin has the complexion of a freshly dug up potato and the mic sounds heavily processed like I'm down a well. All right, let's wrap this up. This year's ZenBook 14 is in a completely different price bracket to last year's model. At the time of filming, it was going for its MSRP of 1,300 US dollars. And as I showed you, not everything about this year's model is better. The pros are that it's a lot faster than last year's model and it has better speakers and it looks a little more premium. The cons are that its keyboard is worse, its screen isn't that bright and the Intel Media Lake processor, which is the main upgrade in this year's model, it's a bit of a disappointment. Because of that processor, this laptop gets warmer to the touch, it still has some fan noise and it has a lot less battery life than last year's version. For the new price that this laptop is now going for, it's now up against more premium laptops like Lenovo's Yoga 9i, Dell's Xperia 13 Plus, Apple's MacBook Airs and even HP Spectres. For the most part, I think this laptop does compete well against them. But because of that price increase, it's just no longer a must buy, it's more of a good buy. For example, compared to the MacBook Air, this laptop is faster and comes with a lot more memory, but the Air has a brighter screen, no fan noise and longer battery life. Before I go, I think one of the nice side effects of this new version is that it will make the pricing of last year's still excellent version even better. For those buying the laptop for some more intensive tasks like say you're doing professional programming or even some light video editing, you will definitely notice the increased performance of this new model and that's the one you should buy. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed. It definitely helps the channel grow, which means that we can create more videos for you. Plus, as I always say, it makes my dearest mother very proud. Make sure to check out our website for the latest laptops that we recommend for different types of users and where to find the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.